We ended the first part in 1947, and then we continue from 1947, because it was a very important period. The, the third, yani the first 50 minutes of the second part, they talk about 1947 to the May 1948. Only just, you know, less than a year, because this is less than a year was very critical in the Palestinian story, because in May 1948, the British mandate left Palestine, and then the fourth part talks about what happened after 48. And we go through the refugees problem because it's the biggest problem that there were uh, 850,000 Palestinians kicked just in those two years from 47 to 49. And we jump from 49 to 2008. We don't go through what happened after that. This is also because the Arab viewers know what happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I jumped, and, and the idea was that the Nakba continued. The catastrophe, the Palestinian Kassar, is still the same. Ethnic cleansing was on group level. Now it is on individual level. The Palestinian himself is always at risk. They can kill him, they can arrest him, they can kick him out. Till today, the, the idea, the concept of ethnic cleansing, and th that is to kick the people steal their homes, steal their lands, wipe their history and replace it with other names and other history and make sure they will never come back, it's still the same. Nothing changed. They are still demolishing homes and taking lands and imprisoning people, women, children and men, and kicking them out. But it is a slow, gradual ethnic cleansing. It's not a big one chunk thing that happened in 1948. It is very slow, but it is the same idea. So the, the, the last of the film, it talks about nowadays, what's happening nowadays in the West Bank and Gaza Strip, and saying that those are 10 million Palestinians now, five inside the historical land of Palestine, the whole inside Israel, one, one and a half million, and three millions and a half in the West Bank and Gaza Strip, and five million outside Palestine. The, what the situation of those 10 million Palestinians. And at the end, the, the, the film says the story did not end. It is still continuing, and we don't know yet what will be the story, the end of this story. Um, because the story of Palestine is full of really a lot of blood. It is a lot of killing, a lot of blood that was there. And the film did not show a single image of that. And it, I omitted all this. I didn't want people either to cry or to be, you know, seeing all those horrible images. I wanted them to understand. And um, the strange thing that both the young generation and the old generation liked, liked uh, this film. And I felt that they liked the, both of them. The people who knew and who were part of the events and the new generation who heard from their even grandparents, not their parents, about the story and wanted, wanted to know more. لم تبدأ نكبة ثمانية وأربعين قبل ستين عاما بدأت سياسيا قبل أكثر من مئتي عام عام الف وسبعمائة وتسعة وتسعين استعصت هذه الأسوار هنا في عكا على نابليون فاتجه تفكيره الاستعماري ضد توسع بريطانيا ووجه نداء إلى يهود العالم O oh Israelites, rise up. This is the moment. France is extending its hand to you with the legacy of Israel. Rush to reclaim your position amongst the peoples of the world. Napoleon's appeal made headlines in the French press. But Napoleon was defeated. The only memory of him left in Acre is a statue that bears his name erected at the top of a hill. Yet Napoleon's idea of creating a Jewish presence in the region did not die. 
40 years later, Britain revived the plan in response to Muhammad Ali's attempts to unify Egypt and Syria. In 1840, the British Foreign Secretary Lord Palmerston wrote to his ambassador in Istanbul. You have to convince the Sultan and his entourage that it is high time to open Palestine for the immigration of Jews. The number of Jews in Palestine at that time did not exceed 3,000. At the head of the Jewish community's response to the British initiative was Baron Edmund de Rothschild. He visited Palestine on four occasions to explore investment opportunities and spent over 14 million francs to establish 30 Jewish settlements. The most important amongst these was Rishon Lichion, which raised this flag in 1885 while Palestine was still under Ottoman rule. Today, the remains of Baron Rothschild lie in a mausoleum near Haifa, where Israeli children come to learn about a wealthy man who supported Israel over a hundred years ago. Yeah.